Hey there, CPO here, and uh, the next thing I need to do is I want to start leveling this swash to start my mechanical setup. Um, I've got everything back uh, in order. Uh, all the wiring is uh, is buttoned down, with the exception of this ESC, uh, which I'm still uh, still waiting uh, to install. Um, I got my servo, my rear servo, relocated from the left side to the right side of the helicopter. Uh, reversed the uh, the direction in the fly barless software so that it knew that it was going uh, in a different direction. And uh, now I'm ready to, uh, to level this swash. So the first thing I need to do is remove basically everything on the head above the swash so the swash can freely move up and down. So I'm gonna start that process and then we'll move from there. So basically what I need to do to get this thing apart, uh, I need to do a couple of things. One of them is going to be to um, loosen up this nut uh, and, uh, and bolt holding the main shaft uh, within here. So I have a little needle nose pliers and my driver. That's gonna free up the, uh, the main shaft. Don't, uh, don't wanna lose that. And now uh, the next thing I need to do is look at removing these links. So I've got links, uh, four links that I need to remove, all four of these balls on the swash so that it can be free to move. Um, I think what I'm gonna do first is pop these off the top just to be safe. So those are off. Um, and then that, uh, that re relieves some of the binding. Uh, the next thing I need to do is get these guys off of here. They're kind of tricky to pop off. The tool doesn't really work that well for them just because of where the swash is. But they're not too bad to pop off. Uh, and with that said, um, I should be able to remove this, uh, this whole assembly. The challenge here is I need to loosen up these bolts here because there's too much pressure still on this uh, main shaft. And that's because on, on this uh, model, I don't know if it's like this for all heads, uh, but if I tighten those down, it applies pressure on the main shaft. So with that, now I can remove the, uh, the rotor assembly. So now I have my swash here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these links. And now that uh, everything else is off, they're much, much easier to just pop off by hand here. Oops. Um, so get those out of the way and now basically what I have is a bare main shaft with just the swash and that gets me to a point where I can start working on leveling. Alright so I'm gonna go ahead and slip my uh, swash leveling tool on. It basically goes on just like this and it's just gonna slip down over the main shaft. You need to make sure you get one designed for your helicopter that way the uh, the diameter of the main shaft uh, is correct. And you can see uh, at each of these three um, endpoints is a, you know, a ball uh, basically uh, on the swash. And that's what you're gonna level against. But now we need to power up the helicopter to get the servos uh, set at their 90s uh, for leveling. So I'm gonna take my transmitter, my DX6i here, uh, put the throttle in the low position uh, and everything else uh, centered and then just power it on. Get that out of the way. And uh, then I'm gonna plug the battery into my ESC. My motor is disconnected at this point, so the only thing uh, that's gonna be getting any power are the servos. And basically my fly barless system is initiating and uh, I'm good to go now. The other thing I want to do before I get started is uh, I want to plug in uh, my fly barless system, the Robird, into uh, the computer with its software up and running. I can go into the setup guide and go into my collective pitch uh, settings and basically 
all three of these servos, left, sir, and right, are in a setup state, which means they're not getting any, um, any input from the receiver or the, um, uh, the fly barless system, the gyro. So when I'm not in a setup state, if I go back here to the welcome screen, These are sort of in a constant state of correction by the fly barless system, right? So if I move, uh, the fly barless system wants to adjust because it just it's trying to do a heading hold uh, and trying to keep everything kind of stabilized for me, which is its job. So uh, because I'm working on making changes, I want that to be a constant setting. So if I go here to screen four, collective pitch, then basically. Um, it leaves them at what is their 90 degree setting, basically, um, and uh, and then I can adjust the swash plate from there. Now I need to make sure the pitch is in the proper position, right? Because I, I can move that up and down, and then that impacts, uh, and, and I'll use that eventually. But for now, I want it mid uh, for the initial setting, and uh, basically what I'm looking for is as this swash plate tool moves up and down along the main shaft uh, with the swash, I want to see um, where there are gaps of light. And I'll take a couple pictures to kind of show you um, what that looks like. It's kind of hard to get uh, on camera. But basically, uh, that's what I'm looking for. So I have gaps of light right now on uh, these two uh, front servos. Uh, which means this one is a little bit higher. So rather than adjusting these two independently, I'm going to adjust the rear one. And the reason I want to adjust the rear one uh, as well is because I had to make some changes when I when I adjusted and moved the servo from the left side to the right side of the helicopter. I also had to switch uh, the positioning of the servo um, link ends so that the A's lined up. So basically what that means is I might have adjusted it out uh, the wrong way instead of adjusting it in. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and reach in here and pop that off. This may be easier done without this, uh, uh, this anti-rotation bar here. As a matter of fact, uh, I think for the purposes of this, I'm going to remove the anti-rotation bar. So I'm just going to remove this really quick. go. So with that off, now I can go in and uh, much easier get to that bottom link. And basically what I want to do is uh, shorten it. So in order to shorten it, I want to make one whole turn uh, clockwise. So basically I'm going to hold my link here with my ball link plier and I'm going to turn it I can't turn it half a turn I got to turn it a full turn so that the A lines up properly so with that said I should have the A on that side and I do and now I can put it back on Matter of fact, I'm going to use my link pliers for this as well. Sorry, you can't see this. It's a little bit tight to get in there. There we go. All right, so that is now on. Uh, I do want to put my anti rotation bracket uh, back in place. 
so that everything stays lined up. The good news is uh, this does not require thread lock. So it's pretty easy to take on and off. Okay, set my swash leveling tool back on. Let's take a look at that now. So now my front two are touching and my rear one is touching. So it looks like that got me level. Which in my opinion is, a, is an indicator that when I adjusted these links, uh, and set the original distances between the ball uh, holes that I must have got it pretty darn close the first time. Again, I made some changes to this back one uh, to move that servo, so that may explain why it was off. So that's a, a pretty good lesson that the closer you get it set up, uh, your, your servo's to 90 and your, uh, your link's exactly the same length, the better your chances of that being level uh, to begin with. So now what I want to do is move this to the uh, full throttle up position and take a look at where I'm at and look for daylight. I don't see any daylight. Everything looks level to me. Um, I'm not seeing anything there. Let me go full throttle down. And I don't see any daylight there either. Oh, wait, I got a little bit of daylight on the back servo. So this is hopefully a view that will help you see uh, uh, how I've got this gap here. Uh, and you can actually see my finger as I move behind it uh, on this back servo uh, at the low position. If I go back up to center stick, the gap goes away. Full stick, no gap. Back down, you can see how it separates, and then I, uh, I get that gap. So it's basically a servo travel issue with that back servo. So on the downward side, at full, uh, full down uh, throttle and collective, uh, obviously, uh, it has a little bit of more travel than the others. Uh, but if I look at the other two servos, they all seem to be uh, dead on. So really my only adjustments are gonna be with that back one. And I think from here on out, it's not a mechanical adjustment anymore. Okay, so the way that I adjust this uh, pitch travel to make sure that the swash is level in the down position, and again, just to kind of recap, uh, I had to take a, a quick break here. Just to recap, uh, it's center stick, everything is level. At high stick, everything is level. And at low stick, you can see uh, that rear servo travel goes down a little bit too far and, uh, and gives me some air there. So where I fix that is here in the Fly Barla software. So I know a lot of, uh, a lot of Googling will tell you uh, to go back to the, uh, the transmitter to make the adjustments on the travel settings. But if you remember previously, when setting up the Robird uh, software with, with the transmitter, uh, I kind of did some calibration there to sync the two. If I go in and I adjust travel limits on the transmitter alone, then I kind of undo some of that synchronization I have with the software. So it really uh, made sense that the software was the place to go uh, to adjust this. And in fact it is. It took me a little while to figure out and I had to get some help uh, from my internet friends as my wife calls it. Uh, but it turns out in uh, tab 4 of the software, the collective pitch tab, the same place we used to set the, uh, the servo uh, uh, 90 degree uh, sub trim, is down here is a pitch elevation and pitch aileron level. 
And basically how this works is um, you adjust two things to affect one. And it, it seemed kind of counterintuitive to me at first, but now it makes perfect sense. Uh, but basically what you're doing is controlling the mix ratio between the th three servos. And where it seemed like at first glance, I want to just be able to find a way to adjust the travel of that rear center pitch servo. Um, what ends up happening is I end up adjusting uh, down the other two front servos, the left and the right. Um, so in this case, if I adjust both of these down to negative five, what I find is I get level swash on all three edges. I'm just taking a look down here. Yep, um, level on all three. And, uh, and now with that setting, if I go back to mid stick, I'm level, high stick, level, low stick, level. So I have a perfectly level swash and it's done in the Robird uh, fly barless software. This software is amazing. Um, you know, once you figure out and know what to do with it, uh, it really is pretty simple to get everything adjusted. So now that I have that, I'm gonna hit save because I always hit save if there's a save button. Um, and then I'm gonna go back to the welcome screen, which is gonna reinitialize the uh, fly barless system and then it's gonna write those changes as well um, so that uh, I am perfectly saved in there. So um, now I am set with my swash level. Again, uh, it doesn't look like it's level here, but that's because in, this, in the configuration I'm in, I'm still getting some adjustments from the fly barless system. So I can't 100% rely on it being level at this stage. I need to go to setup and then get those uh, you know, adjusted uh, and remove the uh, remove the actual influence from the fly barless system. So there it is again, just those uh, servos uh, up, mid, down, and uh, my swash leveler stays perfectly fine. So anyway, um, that's how I did that. Uh, by the way, while I'm in here, I did mention I had to to change out uh, switch sides on that uh, that center servo. Uh, and then where, um, where I resolved that was right here uh, on the screen here, you can see center reverse. So it was down like that. Um, and then of course when I changed sides, the servo arm ended up, I needed to go a different direction. So I just, you know, unreverse it basically. And then now it's uh, in line with the other uh, servos. So um, that was pretty much it, nice and simple. Uh, this screen actually helps you because basically what you want is you want all the servos uh, to the up position uh, and uh, so I was able to fix that after the fact so I'm gonna hit save again just to be sure I didn't mess anything up hit welcome reinitialize and uh, that is it for that thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one